this. Yeah. You know, you know uh, Wayne, every week when I do marriage seminars, I do about 30 seminars a year all over the country. They're Saturday events. Every Saturday, I have half a dozen, dozen people come by and say to me things like, you know, we were that close to divorce. Somebody gave us your book. We read it. It made sense. We tried it. It turned our marriage around. What have you got to lose, right? A- absolutely. You know, and so, yes, and the book is just filled with these kind of stories, you know, of course. And, and, uh, but, but every week I hear that. And to me, it's so encouraging because it says to me that the book is continuing to speak to people. People are still discovering this book. You know, after 16 years, mm-hmm. they're just now discovering it. And it's, it's new to them. And when you do discover it and apply it in your marriage, it makes a tremendous difference in your marriage. Gary, tell me more what goes on inside you when you hear people come to you and say, God has used your book this way yeah. in my life. But for both you and your wife, because this has been a, yeah. a team project, hasn't it? Well, it has been. And, you know, uh, my wife and I originally wanted to go to uh, Africa. That was our goal, to go to Africa and teach in a seminary, train national workers how to reach their people for Christ. And we were turned down because of my wife's health. And they said she would not survive in another country. Well, you know, she's done well through the years. She's learned how to cope with things, and she's done well. Uh, And we were very disappointed. It was very disturbing to us. Uh, But then as the years went along and I began to write books and so forth, uh, you know, they send us all the editions of all the foreign, co- you know, send us copies of that. And you, we, we, you're fluent in all those languages. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> People think if I write in their language, I can read their language. But, I, you know, but my wife and I pray for the countries and we pray for the books when the books come in. And I don't know, two or three years ago, we had opened up a box of books and uh, I looked up at my wife and she was crying. And I said, Carolyn, why are you crying? She said, Gary, I'm just remembering we wanted to go to the mission field. And now your books are all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just that moment of you know in which we just realized the sovereignty of God over our lives. Mm-hmm. He had all this in mind. You know, when we were turned down for the mission field, it never crossed my mind to write a book. In fact, it never crossed my mind to get into counseling either. <laughs> <laughs> God so, had a better idea. <laughs> God has a way of channeling our lives where He's prepared us to minister. When I went to college, I never thought about going into counseling. In fact, when I was in graduate school and seminary working on my PhD, they didn't even have a PhD in counseling and seminary. They didn't have a master's degree in counseling and seminaries. So my counseling, I learned after I got out of school, after I got my PhD, I learned how to counsel. (laughs) And so my PhD was in adult education. How do adults learn, you know? But I got in the church and I found out people are hurting in their marriage and they want to talk about it. And so I, I read everything I could and learned everything I could, and uh, all of my counseling, you know, came out of the out of the, the foxhole. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, I'm sure you talk about this in the book, but what if a, a husband and wife aren't on the same wavelength at all? Yeah. And let's say the wife picks up this book, yeah. thinks this is great, and wants to implement this, yeah. but her husband's not cooperating. Well, you know, I find that often in my counseling, a wife will come alone, or a husband will come alone and say, my husband will not come for counseling. Uh, He won't even read a book. He won't even talk about us. And they come very defeated, but they come also asking, is there anything I can do? And what I've done many, many, many times through the years, after I've heard their story and felt their pain, I share the concept of the five love languages and how all of us desperately need to feel loved. And that just as the wife feels unloved sitting in my office, the husband probably feels unloved, too. He's at home, but he won't come for yeah. counseling, but he doesn't feel loved either. He's clamped up about yeah, it. Yeah, right. And so I share with her that concept and that the most powerful thing we can do for another person is to choose to love them in their language over a long period of time, unconditionally, no matter how they respond. No payback? No payback at all. Just don't expect anything. And... Uh, Over and over again, I've seen those husbands, or sometimes it's the wife, who melts when they start to get love in their own language. You know, I remember years and years ago, a wife stopped by my office, and she said, I'm on my way to the the lawyer's office. I don't know why I came in here. I know I've heard about you. I knew this was where you worked, and I just came in to see if you'd happen to be free. And I just want to say, I don't know. I don't know why I came here. And then she poured out her story of a husband who basically had neglected her for 20 years. She said he works all day. He has an automotive shop in the backyard. He works on cars in the evening. One night a week, he goes out with the guys and drinks. He doesn't get drunk, but he comes home. And and she said, he expects me to have his meal ready every night. He expects me to have his clothes clean. He expects me to have sex with him at least once a week. And that's all there is to it.